Welcome. In this video, we will discuss finding parametric equations for a given graph. But before we start discussing the actual subject, let's just review a task from our previous lesson. Let's start by looking at this introduction question, which states, eliminate the parameter and write the following parametric equations in rectangular form. Well, notice that we have two parametric equations. We have an equation for x and we have an equation for t, I'm sorry, for y. So now what we want to do is we want to just write this equation in parametric form. So recall that if your parametric equation is given in terms of sine and cosine, we will be using the trigonometric identity, which says that sine squared plus cosine squared is equals to one. So therefore, if you want to use that parametric, I'm sorry, if you want to use this identity, perhaps it would be a good idea for us to just solve for cosine on the x and solve for sine on the y. So let's start by doing that. Let me just rewrite my x trigonometric function. And now let me write down my y function in terms of a trigonometric expression. And now by looking at x, let me solve for cosine. So now if I take away h, if I take away h, now this becomes x minus h equals a cosine of t So now I know that cosine of t is x minus h over a. So notice that we have properly solved for x, I'm sorry, for cosine. So now in here, let's solve for sine. So now this becomes y minus k equals b sine of t divided by b. So now we know that sine of t is equivalent to y minus k over b. So now that we have properly solved for sine and cosine, now we can use this identity that we've been given. Because now I know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one, but notice that sine, I have an expression for it, which is y minus k over b. Square plus cosine squared, but notice that cosine is x minus h over a squared, and that's equals to 1. But not notice what kind of equation is this? This, if we were to graph this equation, this is actually the standard form of an ellipse. So notice that now what we have shown is that those equations which are represented as an ellipse can also represent can also be represented using parametric equations. If we were to graph these parametric equations, one for x and one for t for t for y, we would have seen that it would just follow the curvature of an ellipse, which and the reason why we know that is because if we were to rewrite them in standard form or rectangular form, we can see that it represents an ellipse. So now let's actually concentrate on the subject for today, which is the idea of finding parametric equations for a given graph. So what we're going to try to show today is that for any graph that we've been given, we can always find a set of parametric equations that will represent the curvature given by that graph. So let's take a look at example one, which states, use the given information to complete the following. Okay, so let's start by graphing the following equation. 1 minus x squared. So let me just grab that for you and I'll be back. So now we're back. So now notice that now we have here our graph for the function 1 minus x squared. And now what we want to do is we want to come up with a set of parametric functions which actually follows this curve. Because now, notice that we've been given the rectangular equations, so now we want to come up with our own parametric functions. So how do we come up with our own parametric functions? Well, let's take a look at B. Because now, under B it says, use the parameter 
t equals x to define the set of parametric equations. Well, parametric equations, we need two sets. We need an equation for x of t, and we need an equation for y of t. Because this is how we have defined parametric equations so far. One equation for x and one equation for y. So how can we come up with our functions? Well, notice that if we set this parameter, if we set the parameter of x to be equivalent of t, so now notice that we can use that as, a, as our x of t. x of t can be seen as just t, because it's the same for every x, there's a t. So the function of x is just equivalent to t. So now notice that we have come up with our first parametric equation. We have a parametric equation for x. So now the question becomes, how can we come up with a parametric equation for y? Well, this is saying, can, can we find an equation for y in terms of t? Well, notice that the equation for y is given to us by the curve that we want to represent. So therefore, we can come up with our equation for y and substitute x for our parameter equation for x, which in this case is just defined as t. So now what this is saying is that the equation for the parameter of y, it will be equivalent to y of t to be equivalent to one minus. And every time I see an x, I'm just gonna plug in my parameter, which in this case is just a simple t. And now if we simplify this a little bit further, now notice that we have our set of parametric equations now. Here's my parametric equation, my set of parametric equations that will follow the curvature for the function y minus x squared. Well, let's make sure that, that is true. Let's show that this is actually true. So here we have our parameter. I'm sorry, here we have our curve. So this is the curve that we want to parameterize. So let's take a look at our first parameter. Notice that if we graph the set of parametric equations that we obtained in our previous example, notice that it matches. Let me actually make this a little bit bolder. So now notice that it matches. So I know that the, the curvature is correct. So now let's take a look at our Let's take a look at our direction. Let me actually make this go forward and let me make it a little slower. So now notice that our direction is going from the left to the right. So we have the correct curvature. We have the correct curvature. And now we can see that our direction is of a parametric equation that is moving from the left to the right. So let's actually graph that because to actually represent the graph, I'm just gonna use the same function because we know that it is the same parameter. Now, if we wanted to graph, if we wanted to graph our function for our new parameters, it should be the same exact curvature. But now the benefit of writing it down in parametric equations is that now we have some kind of direction to it, which is going to be moving from the left to the right. So let's just indicate this. Uh, don't know why it's moving that way. There's an easy way to fix this. So there you go. Okay. Well, I hope you get the, the idea here. Sorry for, for the way that it looks, but you know, we should be just having some kind of a movement from the left going to the right. So this is how we can come up with our own parametric equations. You set up a parameter for X and then you use that value of X to define the parametric equations for Y. But now, what if we still want to represent the same parameter? What if we take a look at C? It says, use the parametric equation. So now notice that we're gonna try to use a different parameter for X. 
Now we want to use the parameter t equals one minus x, and let's try to come up with the same set of functions. So for c, we want to represent the same curve, but now notice that we want to use the parameter We want to use the parameter one minus x. So how is this going to change our set of parametric equations? Because my first parametric equation, we were just using the parameter t equals x. So notice that we're going to use, we're going to define our parameter in a different way now. So if we define our parameter in a different way, how is this going to change the way that we're going to have our curvature? and our direction or orientation. Well, the idea still follows. So here we have our parameter. So if we want to come up with our function for x of t, we're going to get our parameter and we're going to solve for t. Oops. We're going to get our function and we're going to solve for t. So if we wanted to solve for t, we're going to take away 1. So now we have t minus 1 equals negative x. And now we have that x is 1 minus t. So therefore, my parametric equation, my parametric equations for the x value is just going to be equivalent to 1 minus t. So notice that the parametric equations for x, it's always been defined by the way that we define our parameter. So given the parameter, solve for x, and that's how we're going to define our equation for the parametric equation for x. Now, to get the parametric equation for y, to get the parametric equation for y, we're going to use the same task. If this is the function that we're going to represent or that we want to find a curvature of, so let's get that function. And now, if we want to define our parametric equation for y of t, all we got to do is come up with our function for y. And now we're going to replace x with the actual parametric expression that we found for x, which in this case is 1 minus t. And if we simplify this, this is just going to become 2t minus t squared. So now, but we got completely different parametric equations because now in my first example, my parametric equation for x was t and for y is 1 minus t squared. So now we have completely different parametric equations. Does that mean that we're going to get a completely different curve? Let's find out. So again, here we have the parametric equation that we solved initially for t. Now, if we graph the parametric equation that we got for the second example, notice that we're still having the same curvature. We still have in the curvature one minus x squared. So at least the curvature, it is still defined the same way. So we definitely parameterize in the same curve. But what seems to be the difference? Because these equations are definitely different than this set of equations. So what seems to be the difference? Well, let's take a look at the direction. Let me try to make this a little bit slower. Now notice my direction. Now my direction seems to be moving from the left going to the right, which is completely different than what we got initially. Because now on my second set of parametric equations, it seems like my direction is going from right to left. But notice that we're still using the same parametric. We're still parametrizing the same curve. Let's give it a graph here. I'm using the same curvature, but now for my second set of parametric equations, for my second set of parametric equations, notice that my direction is going 
from the right to the left. So one thing to, to keep in mind is that the way that we're going to define our parameters does play a role. Because notice that when we define our parameter as just being x equals t, my direction was going from left to right. And when I define my parameter as 1 minus x, we were going from right to left. So this is a very, very important idea to understand is that parametric representations of a given problem or a given curve are not unique. What we're trying to say here is that there are many there are many ways to represent parametric equations. of the same curve. What's going to change? It's either the orientation and sometimes the speed. What we mean by orientation is the way that the object is moving. Here's an example. Here we have the same curve, but by defining my parameter by defining my parameter x equals t notice that my direction was going from left to right and when i define my parameter y minus x notice that it is still the same curve but now my direction or my orientation was from right to left so the way that we define our parameters the way that we define our parameters, it is going to just affect either the orientations or there are times that the orientation will be the same, but it's just going to be that the object is going to move faster or slower. But regardless of the way that we define our parameters, we should still have the same curve. And this is very important. There are many ways that we can define parametric equations from the same curve. I hope that this was useful.